Hello princesses! Today I'm going to be applying a full face of Can Make products. This is the look that I have after using a full face of Can Make. There are some aspects that I really like and some aspects that I really don't like. So if you'd like to see how I achieve this look and my thoughts on the products, then please just keep watching. So I have moisturized my face but I haven't done my sunscreen because I picked up the Mermaid Skin Gel UV which is for your body and face. This one said that it was kind of like a sunscreen and a makeup primer and when I swatched it on my hand it kind of looked shimmery so I'm a little bit nervous that it's going to make my face look like a disco ball but this is like a holy grail of so many princesses so I thought I would give it a go. The texture is really pleasant. So far it feels very easy to apply, although because I had a smaller amount, if I was actually going out into the sun today, I'd probably apply two layers. So I would do two thinner layers just because of how watery it is to start with. But it sets down really quickly, which I really like. And it appears to give my skin a little bit of a glow, so there is a little bit of shine, but it doesn't look like oily, it just looks shimmery. So this is what we have for our foundation today and I've forgotten the name of it and everything is in Japanese including the original packaging so I will put the name here and as always everything will be linked in the description box below too. The packaging is really cute, it's like a little quilted cover in blue metallic and it's a pretty good size as well. There is a really decent sized mirror in there as well as the powder foundation and this little like sponge thing. I know that you are supposed to use the sponge to apply the powder powder foundation so I'm gonna give it a go I've already swatched this and it is really not the right color for me so I am hoping that it's not gonna make me look too orange okay that did like very little at all I'm gonna try cushion puff as well because that's what I would normally use and see if that picks up and applies more It definitely picks more up, but it's a little bit hard to apply with sponges. It's also giving me a really odd skin texture. Like, my skin looks very textured. Maybe a brush? So I'm going to use this domed fluffy brush and see if this works any better. I honestly prefer the brush. So that is one side with the powder foundation and one side without. The color actually isn't that bad when it's on. It is a little bit orange. Um, and I'll zoom in and show you guys afterwards because it's unlikely that you'll see the difference from here. Um, and there is very little coverage. It's just like a general powder, I guess. I don't know, I used to use a powder foundation when I was younger and I think I don't know, maybe I didn't need as much coverage then, or maybe I just had less to cover, but yeah, I don't know. This is listed as a powder foundation, so it's supposed to be able to cover everything like a foundation would. And it does have some coverage, don't get me wrong, but not enough for me. So I'm going to blend it down my neck a little bit, but honestly it's not going to help that much, but we'll give it a go. <laughs> so that is what the skin looks like. It's not bad, like I said, it's just not what I'm used to. So this is what the skin looks like up close. The one thing that I don't like about it as well is that it really emphasizes those fine lines underneath my eyes, which is so not good. <laughs> and it does emphasize some of the dry skin around my nose. I have been sick recently, so I've been blowing my nose and therefore it is dry. Doesn't look so bad around my chin and jawline, but you can see some of it building up and creating texture. This is a birthmark, it's not where I've missed foundation. Obviously this part of my skin is the same colour as that part, that is a bit that's different and um, the foundation won't cover this up anyway. So we're going to move on to eyebrows and I have the eyebrow liquid um, and I got this in the darkest shade but it's so not dark. At least it looks like a good grey shade so I have hope. There weren't actually that many descriptions on Dokodema which is where I got all of these products so I kind of had to just guess and do a little bit of googling and see what I thought. This is supposed to be like more like an eyebrow stain. So it's a liquid, you can draw it on and you can draw like little eyebrows. Like actual like little lines for your eyebrows rather than colouring them in as like a block. I really don't like this foundation. And even though the colour is super light, it actually blends in okay so far. 
it's just lighter. It's definitely very grey though. Okay, now for the other side, I'm not as coordinated on this side, so you might get a little bit lost in the mirror. The other thing about the powder as well is that there's just now so much powder in my eyebrows that it's getting on this, so I'm having to wipe it off. Question is, will it draw on the scar? Since it's such a thin liquid, yeah, it kind of colours it in, but it's not not really doing that much for it. Okay guys, what do we think of the brows? They're not as intense as I usually draw them and I had a bit of trouble getting this one to be the same colour because this one had less powder foundation on my eyebrow. I don't know how or why, but I will save my thoughts for a little bit later maybe. Next up is liquid eyeliner and I got the quick and easy eyeliner in the shade black. So this just has your normal felt tip and I'm hoping that it draws a nice line and doesn't bleed too much. Alright, that is one eye done. It's not a bad eyeliner, it's just it seems to be running out of ink already, which is really annoying. It's already going grey. What is wrong with this eyeliner? So it did go grey, but I kind of got the eye done as well. I'm going to do mascara and then I'm going to show you guys close up after that. So the mascara that I got was the Gokubutu mascara. Don't think I'm saying that correctly, but that's okay. It has quite a nice like hourglass shaped wand and it's a little bit fluffy, so we'll give that a go. Yeah, I got mascara all over my eyelid. Alright, I'm just going to clean up the edges and then I'll zoom you in and show you the eyes. Alrighty, so here are the eyes and brows. This brow looks great. I like it. This brow does not look great. This one does have less hair, so I have gaps here and I have gaps here. I'm not sure if it ran out of ink because that one looks great. Or if that, because this eyebrow had more powder like foundation stuck in it, that it was affecting that. So I think I'll review the... Um, brow liquid a little bit later in a full review and decide that for sure. The eyeliner, that one looks fine. Yeah, I know that's real crooked though. Um, and then this one, you can see where the eyeliner has like sort of stopped in the middle. It's much less black um, and it was much harder to complete the eyeliner on this side after this one. Again, it could be the powder foundation messing things up, but I don't know. The mascara, however, is really lovely. I didn't curl my lashes because I was lazy and it still did a really good job of curling them for me. It seems to have dried down quite well and I hope that it's transfer proof. But it gave them a little bit of volume and really great separation. I really like the way it looks on my lower lashes. Still hating on that powder foundation though. <laughs> So now we're going to move on to blushes and I got the super cute matte fleur cheeks. These ones are so adorable. Like I have been waiting to get these for so long. I swatched all of them and I only have three out of the four because the fourth one is literally not available anywhere, which is really, really annoying. I hate it when people discontinue just one shade out of the collection. Just mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to choose shade number one. Shade number two is cool toned, shade number one is warm toned pink, and then shade number three is like a really beautiful peachy orange. The blushes actually come with this cute little brush and it feels quite nice so I'm, I'm going to try it. It's like absolutely miniature but we'll give it a go. So I'm going to swirl around in all of the colours, tap off some of the excess, I'll lose my mirror, and then sweep that just across my apples. So the brush blends it up beautifully, but it's tiny. So I would use this if I was taking this blush on a trip and I couldn't afford the space for an actual blush brush. But otherwise, I wouldn't use this just casually because it's just so small. Oh, this is such a pretty color. The Zoeva brush doesn't create as much fallout as well, which is quite nice because when you have mixed colors in a palette, when the fallout gets everywhere, it kind of contaminates the other colors. Although this is definitely not something where I would use the colours separately anyway because they're just too small. That is really pretty. Look how natural that looks. Ah, 
I also got the Glow Fleur highlights. Um, there are two shades, one that is kind of like a bluey white and one that is a pinky white. I'm going to try the pinky white because I think that's going to look nicer with the blush that I chose. If I had chosen the cool toned blush, I would have gone for the blue. Let me lazy and use the same brush, but that side's got blush on it and this side doesn't have anything, so I'm going to use that to highlight. What do you think of that? It's a really pretty highlight for every day. It's not super, super blingy and out there, which I personally prefer. But if you like yourself a really obvious highlight, probably not the ones for you because it's just not, like, you're not going to see it from outer space. And I know a lot of princesses like that, so not for you, but definitely for me. And last but not least, I have lips. So a lot of the Japanese beauty doesn't have, like, really pigmented lipsticks a lot of them are very sheer and very natural and in general I usually find Japanese beauty to be more on the natural side which I do actually really like sometimes I want to look like I'm really wearing makeup and sometimes I don't so I got the your lip only glosses there are four shades three of them look like they're clear that's kind of like a pinky clear that's like uh, got shimmer in it and that one's just full clear but these two actually do turn another color so like they turn pink and then this one turns like a like a fuchsia pink basically and then you have this one, which kind of looks like black or a really, really dark berry color. And I'm so curious to see what this looks like, so I'm going to try it out. If it doesn't look good, then I'll take it off. So the doe foot applicator is a really good size. It's very straight, which is unusual. I'm used to having them a little bit curved. My lips are already a little bit purple because it's cold. Which is why I'm back in my Sailor Moon hoodie. Interesting. So pros, it is really easy to apply. The dope applicator works well and it's nicely flexible. It picks up more than enough product. I don't know how I feel about the color. I thought it would turn kind of like pinky or purpley, but it's still kind of like, kind of what you see in the tube, like a blacky red, I don't know. So I'm gonna zoom you in and show you a little closer. So these are the lips, super glossy and pretty. But you can see that even though it's coloured, it's still pretty sheer, so you can see like little chunks or like little imperfections on my lips. I do have freckles on my lips, so some of those you're seeing at the moment. It's an interesting colour, it's kind of like a very deep berry, but sheer at the same time. Here are the cheeks. The glow is super natural and beautiful, and I love the colour of the blush. It's not really that apparent, but I like that. And for final time, here are the eyes. Hello. So this is my full face of Can Make and Makeup. I'm going to check in a little bit later on the day and show you guys how this has worn. So it's now been three hours after I put my makeup on today. The gloss has pretty much worn away entirely, but it did stain like a really pretty pink colour. It was like a really nice berry colour for a little while, but I think it's pretty much all gone now. So it didn't last a very long time. But it did leave my lips feeling really, really moisturized, which I really like. First of my face looks pretty much the same apart from my nose. So because I've been blowing my nose a little bit, it has started to like really cake up, which I really don't like. So normally when I'm sick, the foundation kind of disappears entirely from here, but I've never seen it cake up like that. I don't know. So I'm actually going to be doing some eyeshadow swatches while I'm doing this first impression because I got one of these palettes in the mail from Holika Holika and I need to try it out. So while I have my makeup looking nice enough, I thought I would do a couple of eyeshadow looks anyway. So in my next update, I'm probably going to have eyeshadow on, but because I wasn't testing out eyeshadow, I feel like it probably doesn't matter that much anyway. So it has been eight hours now and this is what my skin looks like. The lip gloss has long disappeared and we have an addition of eyeshadow, but other than that. So the foundation still looks okay. A lot of the smaller lines are more apparent and it definitely has rubbed fully off around my nose now. It also gets really badly caught in these sorts of lines too, but the blush and the highlight is still really, really gorgeous. I noticed as well when I was blending eyeshadow over the top of the liquid liner that it held up pretty well. Obviously like it's a little bit dull and you shouldn't be applying shadows over your liquid liner anyway because that's just silly but it actually held up pretty well and it didn't smudge even though I was blending on top. And the brows are actually pretty smudge proof as well so you can see if you do that sort of thing they last pretty well too. I'm going to try and smudge the eyeliner. So a little light brush is pretty good. 
it's removing more of the eyeshadow than it is actually the eyeliner, but there is a little bit that did come off, so it's not fully, fully smudge proof, but, but it's pretty good for just like accidental smudges. So this is the full face after eight hours. I apologize for such bright lighting, but it's winter and um, no natural lighting, so I'm standing right in front of the ring light. So it is a little bit ghostly, but yeah, that's fine. So that is it for my full face of Can Make. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I hope you enjoyed seeing some Japanese beauty rather than Korean beauty. If you have any other brands that you would like me to try, please do let me know in the comments down below. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.